After round 16, the verdict is in. G'day everyone, Matt Thompson alongside Match Review Panel Chairman Mark Fraser. And it has indeed been a very busy day for the panel. Let's begin with Fremantle Captain Matthew Pavlich. He's facing three matches on the sidelines, charged for his hit on West Coast's Mitch Brown. The panel deemed it reckless, medium impact and high contact. Important to note he had carryover points here. He'd risk four matches if he fights the charge. Yeah, in this instance, you see Brown bending down to pick up the ball and Pavlich tucks his arm in and makes the forceful uh, high contact. Um, this type of incident's uh, graded quite severely in our table um, due to the potential to cause spinal injury. Um, so as Pavlich has tucked the arm in sort of with a few steps out um, and then makes a high contact, we think this is a reckless act. The impact was uh, medium uh, as uh, Brown does um, play the last quarter, um, but um, we still think there's medium impact in that hit. Yeah, medium impact as opposed to low impact? Yes, um, he, d he does get up um, uh, but doesn't take his kick um, and we thought that from the video and obviously from the medical we received that it was medium impact. And I guess the other key decision you had to make was reckless rather than say negligent. Yeah, because um, he goes in um, with uh, the arm tucked in a few steps out, we believe that that's a reckless sort of act. Alright, let's turn our attention to Ben McGlynn in Sydney. A major blow for the Swans. He's been booked for striking Tom Scully. This one's been assessed as intentional high impact and high contact and again he risks four if he fights it. Yeah, with this one, you see uh, Scully go down for the ball and McGlynn comes in, um, swings a fist and cops him um, high. Um, he was subbed out um, and taken off the field um, from this contact, so we believe that that's a, a high impact strike. You've really thrown the book at McGlynn here. There, there was no other way really for you to assess it. Oh, with um, a clenched fist and, um, yes, him um, throwing the arm like that, we think that's an intentional strike. OK, Saturday Arvo in Geelong. This has got a lot of attention. Steve Johnson kneeing Melbourne's Nathan Jones and it costs him a week. It's been assessed as reckless low impact and body contact. Yeah, with this one, you see uh, Johnson uh, attempt the tackle on Jones but then goes down with the, the knees. Um, we think that um, that's a reckless act, so um, by going down like that um, and with the knee, leading with the knee like that, um, um, he should know that a report could occur, um, and it has with this. So we think there's enough impact in that um, for a, a reportable offence. There's been a lot of a debate about this one. Was there ever any doubt that this would be a charge? Oh, no, no doubt from um, our discussions, um, going down with the knees like that, um, we don't uh, sort of think that's particularly good um, and we think that it's a, a reckless act. Now you're saying the contact was to the chest, not the throat, but still could have been particularly dangerous potentially. Oh yeah, well you can obviously break ribs or do some major damage to somebody by going down with your knees into a contest like that, so we believe that that's um, yeah, enough impact for a, uh, for a, uh, a, a for misconduct charge. charge. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and reckless as opposed to, to negligent, I, I guess that if you're going to lay a charge like this in these circumstances it kind of has to be reckless, uh, uh, reckless over negligent. Yeah, with this, um, whilst he's going down for the, the, the tackle um, uh, sort of initially, he then goes down and drops to the knees, so we think you should know by doing that that you could potentially do a reportable offence. OK, now a rough conduct charge for West Coast's Andrew Embley. The contact against Clancy Pearce here, negligent, high impact and high contact, three weeks down to two. Yeah, here with this one, there's only a step between the, the, the contact um, and uh, Embley going for the ball, so he turns to the side with that last step and then um, tries to obviously make a, a legitimate bump there, as he's sort of entitled to do, but makes the high contact when doing that, so we believe that's a negligent um, high bump, so um, you obviously see the contact there um, is uh, quite, um, quite forceful, so we graded it as high impact. Uh, did, you th did you consider reckless for this one? Uh, we did most, most definitely consider reckless, but because there's only that step out, um, because uh, uh, Pierce does slow down and, and lean with his arm forward rather than um, going straight through with the contest, we believe that Embley was trying to do the right thing, so he's trying to bump him to the side, but um, does it? Yeah, I mean, that's the point, isn't it? It did look like he was trying to execute a legal bump. Yeah, and there's only the step in it as well. So um, uh, I suppose compared to the Pavlich one, there's a few steps out where he's tucked the arm in and Brown's bending down over the ball, whereas here they're both going to the contest and he's trying to, to do the right thing but doesn't. And there was a bad record at play here for Emily as well, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Yep. OK, Hawthorne, Sh Sean Burgoyne now. He's been charged with rough conduct as well. Three weeks down to two with an early plea. Negligent, high impact and high contact for this one for this on Port Adelaide's Tom Logan. Yeah, in this instance, Logan jumps up and uh, Bergwijn comes through and bumps him um, uh, once again, as he's entitled to do, but makes the high contact. So um, with this, uh, unfortunately, there was enough high contact um, uh, and from the medical, we deemed that there's uh, high impact with that bump. All right, and one more also from that game. Port Adelaide's Kane Corns, a six-year good record, saves him a bit for his rough conduct charge against Sam Mitchell. Intentional low impact, body contact, it's a one-week ban. 
Yeah, Mitchell gets rid of the ball there, then afterwards um, Corns comes in and bumps him to the back. Um, from looking at that and um, uh, the medical we received from Hawthorne, we uh, believe that there was low impact with that um, uh, bump, so it's a rough conduct charge. All right, so that'll do it for the suspensions. There is one more, though, that we do want to look at. This is Hawthorne's Jordan Lewis, cited for striking Chad Wingard. Intentional low impact and body contact. He can take a reprimand. Yeah, in this one, um, you see uh, Lewis come round and just uh, throw that right fist uh, into Wingard. He goes down and stays down for a reasonable amount of time. Once again, with the medical we received from Port um, and looking at the vision, how long he stays down for, um, we believe that there was enough impact for a, a charge with that one. Some people have raised the question about whether or not you looked at staging in, in, in this case. Does that, does that come into play at all? Um, not with that instance. Because of the medical we received um, and what that stated um, and seeing how long he was down on the ground for, we didn't believe that there was staging um, at all. All right, Mark, thank you for that. A very busy day for you, one of the busiest of the year in terms of the, uh, the penalties handed out. We'll see uh, what everyone does with their charges. Thanks very much. No worries, Matt. Thanks. Mark Fraser joining us, the chairman of the MRP. A full text report from the panel is on our website. Those charged have until 11 Eastern tomorrow morning to lodge a challenge if they want to take their case to the tribunal. That is all for now. Catch you soon.